So welcome to this tutorial where we're going to follow up on our first tutorial about water and converting that to dialysate. Now what I've listed up here are all of the common components of municipal water. We pretty much discussed all of these in the first part of the tutorial so we'll go through this section very quickly. In blue I've listed all of the common cations and anions that you find in municipal water and I've labeled all of them as capital A in blue. And then here in yellow we've got chlorine and chloramine which you remember are necessary uh, to prevent bacterial growth and that's labeled a capital B. And then you've got the bacteria and endotoxin that can come into your municipal water supply even if chlorine and chloramine are present and I've labeled that as C. And so what we're going to do in the remaining space that we have here is come up with um, a schematic on how you actually take municipal water and make dialysate. So here we have municipal water. And of course municipal water has all three components. So it's got A, it's got B, and it's got C. And we've got to somehow come up with a strategy that eliminates all three of these if we're going to make safe, drinkable, uh, usable, excuse me, dialysate. So let's just circle all these and let's walk through this process. One of the first things that happens to municipal water is that you increase the temperature so that it is suitable for exposure to the blood and you increase the pressure so that it can go through the remainder of the tanks that we're about to draw down here. That leaves us with water that still has A, B, oops, sorry, let's change that color, B, and C. So we've done nothing so far to eliminate these three components. So let's move along. One of the first things that we'll get across is softener. So you, every dialysis unit has a water softener because the water that it receives is going to be filled with lots of calcium and magnesium. And if you don't eliminate this calcium and magnesium, you're going to have problems with the remainder of your water purification system downstream. It's not that calcium and magnesium can't be in the dialysate they can be in the dialysate. In fact, you as a provider, as a physician, are, are going to order certain types of dialysate solutions that have various compositions of these cations, but you need them out of the water right away so that the rest of the water purification system works. So what do you end up with when you eliminate calcium and magnesium? You're going to, eliminate, you're going to end up with water that still has all of these other cations and anions in it, but it doesn't have calcium and magnesium, so we're going to now describe that as small letter A. You still have chlorine and chloramine, you've done nothing there, so that's big B. And you still have your bacteria and endotoxin that could develop at any time, so you have big C. So what you've really eliminated is just the calcium and the magnesium. So we'll just say minus calcium minus magnesium. And we'll call this step two. We'll call this step one. All right, so now we're on to step three. For step three, we're going to apply the carbon filter. So what is this? We'll call it the carbon tank. So the carbon tank is a set of membranes, and there's two in series, one after the other, that will eliminate your chlorine and chloramine. Now why could you not eliminate chlorine and chloramine any other way? Well, the softener will not get rid of chlorine and chloramine, and as you'll see as we go downstream uh, to the next uh, module in the water purification system, the, everything downstream from the carbon tank has a very poor efficacy in removing chlorine and chloramine. So the only way you can get rid of these two is through a carbon tank and this is so catastrophic to the patient in causing such severe hemolytic anemia that you need to have two of them in series. So what are you going to lose here? You're going to lose basically 
all of B. And so now you're just left with little a and big C. So we're making progress. We've got a sum of the cations removed and we've got all of the chlorine and chloramine removed. So what comes next? So now comes the workhorse of the filtration process or the purification process and that's called reverse osmosis. This is the most critical step in this entire purification process. So here's step three and now we're at step four which is the key step so I'm gonna start so reverse osmosis is a membrane that allows water to travel across to the other side but prevents all of the cations and anions from traveling with that water so that means that what we lose is everything else in A and what we're left with is C except reverse osmosis is also very very good at removing bacterial endotoxin so think of reverse osmosis as a way of moving water from chamber A to chamber B and leaving behind practically everything that's dissolved organic and inorganic components so you also lose C and that's why reverse osmosis is considered to be the workhorse of the purification system because it gets rid of everything that's left after the carbon tank. So what do you have? You have something that we're going to call as dialysate. Now you could just take this dialysate and ship it off to the patient so that the pa patient can be dialyzed, but some centers put this dialysate through one more process and that's called a deionizer. And the deionizer is a set of two membranes, uh, one that has protons on it and one that has hydroxide ions on it and basically switches every cation for hydroxide and every anion for protons. Now these don't exist anymore at this stage. There's no uh, letter A or letter C, so not all dialysis units have a deionizer, but if you do, you get rid of whatever minimal amounts of these cations and anions that you have and you end up with what I'm going to call ultra pure dialysis or dialysate excuse me and now you're ready to go to the patient of course you can add a variety of solutes back to this dialysate and you will actually your the nephrologist or you uh, will add different things back to the dialysate depending on what the patient needs but at least you're adding it in a controlled manner you know what you're giving and you know that you're not giving bacteria or endotoxin or uh, chlorine or chloramine which are can cause catastrophe to the patient so this is basically the method by which water is purified so you've got step four here is step four five and that's of course an optional step and then you go to the patient so it's a five-step procedure that gets rid of practically everything that you find in safe drinking municipal water thank you very much